We have been singing matins. We will now for several times sing morning prayer. If uh, you've not already, turn to page 235 and we, we sing morning prayer on page 235. Please stand. <clears throat> O oh, oh Lord, open my lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. to God our light and our life. Worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are His also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God. to God our light and our life. Oh, come and worship Psalm God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. <clears throat> he will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness put an end to them. delivered me from every trouble 
and my eye has looked at triumph on my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now A reading from Mark chapter 9. 
The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. And Jesus did not want anyone to know, for his disciple, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in, in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me but him who sent me. O Lord, have mercy on us, in many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In the name of Jesus, amen. As they were traveling through Galilee, Jesus was talking with his disciples about what's going to happen in the future on Good Friday and Easter. He's talking with them about his own death and resurrection. Now, this isn't the first time. He did it earlier as well. And there's another time, a total of three times, he will let them know what's going to be happening in the future. <clears throat> and so Jesus says that he will be delivered into the hands of men. And that, that came true. He was delivered over to Pontius Pilate, and the people yelled, crucify him, crucify him. And so Jesus, a, a Pilate sentenced Jesus to crucifixion. And this was Jesus' way of making a perfect payment for sin. And that payment was his own blood, precious blood, innocent blood, as a payment for your sin and mine. Jesus is the ransom payment. And so Jesus was basically losing his life in order to save you and me. Jesus had in his mind humility out of love for you and me. And so Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death upon a cross. But it didn't end there. Jesus continued to say that the Son of Man, after three days, will rise. And that's exactly what happened on Easter morning. Jesus defeated our enemy of death and the devil by rising from the dead. So Jesus was not seeking power, but he saved people through weakness. Jesus is not focused on glory, but his goal is on the cross for you and me and for our salvation. But the disciples did not understand this because they are thinking in the realm of glory and power. So when they got to Capernaum and they were in the house, <clears throat> Jesus asked them, what were you discussing on the way? Now, Jesus knew that they were arguing about uh, which one was the greatest among them, but he wanted them to kind of confess their own sin. It's kind of like God asking Adam, Adam, where are you? God knew it, 
Adam, what have you done? God knew what Adam did. And so Jesus asked them, what were you discussing on the way? Were they discussing about how to love and care for the neighbor? No, they weren't. Were they talking about how to serve one another and care for others? No, they were not. Jesus knew that they were arguing with one another about who was the greatest. They were thinking in terms of an earthly kingdom of power. <clears throat> they were thinking of positions of leadership and prestige. They, and this thinking of who is the greatest is a sin. They were bragging about one another. They were boasting about this or that. They were comparing <clears throat> uh, themselves to one another. And for us also to think about which one is the greatest in the classroom, in the, in the family, or in the community is a sin. For us to brag about what we have done and achieved is wrong. For you to boast about this or that is wrong. For you to compare yourselves among other classmates in a sinful way is wrong. And so Jesus said, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. We think in terms of the first is first and the last is last. And what Jesus is, is calling us to do is to repent of our sin is to seek the forgiveness of sins that's found only in Christ and to love the neighbor and those who are in need. He wants us to confess that we are a sinner and that we need Jesus and others need Jesus as well. We have an old Adam that wants to brag and to gossip and to put down other people. But Jesus is calling us to confess our sin, to believe in the forgiveness of sins on account of Christ and to care and love for one another. And to illustrate this, Jesus took a child, put him in the midst of them. Then Jesus took the child and put the child up in his arms. And Jesus said, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives the Father who sent me. So if you receive a child in the name of Jesus, then you are receiving Jesus and you are receiving the Father who sent the Son. The world looks at children as, oh, they're too expensive. Or they're a waste of time and energy. And unfortunately, some people even want to hurt the child in the womb. But children are important in God's eyes. You are important in God's eyes. God loves children. God loves you. A child is helpless. They cannot feed themselves. They need a parent, parents to feed them. Children are dependent upon parents to take care of them, to provide food and clothing and protection and shelter for them. A child cannot walk itself to the baptismal font. So parents feed their children, take care of their children. Parents bring their children to the baptismal font. And there they are baptized in the name of Jesus. In other words, they are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are baptized. You are precious in God's eyes. He loves you. And he provides you with parents and teachers and family and church. But especially the precious gospel for you and for your sake. And so just as children are helpless in and of themselves and need the care and love of parents, so also we are helpless in and of ourselves regarding our own salvation. We cannot pay for our sin. 
We cannot overcome our enemies of death and a devil. We cannot open heaven for ourselves. We are children. We need help. And Jesus has come to our rescue. And he did it by going to the cross on Good Friday. Yes, he was delivered up and sentenced to death. But it was there on the cross. The cross was the means of our salvation. He did what we cannot do. And furthermore, Jesus showed his power over death and the devil by rising from the dead. The disciples did not understand Good Friday or Easter. They did after Pentecost. And they proclaimed and preached this wonderful message. And every Good Friday and Easter, we hear the same message over and over again. And praise God for that. And we cannot get enough of it. And we, we rejoice in always hearing about the death and resurrection of Christ for us and for our salvation. Yes, we rejoice in the good news of Christ's death and his resurrection and the blessings that, that, that this gives to us in the waters of holy baptism, in the proclamation of the word, and in the forgiveness of sins. The gospel then changes us for the better. The gospel gives us faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. May God grant us true humility after the likeness of his own son so that we may serve one another with love and care, reflecting the love and care that God gives to us in Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and we sing the canticle on page 238. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son,
Let us pray. O God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, whose mercies are new to us every morning, we humbly pray that you would look upon us in mercy and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Keep safe Julia Hitz. Let your blessing remain with her today and throughout her life. Preserve her in your righteousness and grant her a portion in that eternal life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful F Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.